show you how to get a brain. And deer heads are kind of hard to come by on demand. So I have a friend who recently butchered their sheep. And so I'm going to show you how to remove a brain from a sheep head instead of a deer, which is very similar. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to cut back the skin. So I'm using this knife to cut back the skin. And this guy has little horns. You know, if you're living somewhere where chronic wasting disease is a problem, you should just use egg yolks to tan your hide and not even mess with, um, with trying to use brains. Okay, so I'm peeling the skin back, which as I'm peeling the skin, I'm just cutting the, um, the silver skin, like this stuff in between the flesh or the skull and the skin. And that's what's allowing me to peel that back so easily. Now, I wasn't able to easily get the skin around here because this is a little buck and he had little horns. And so I'm going to come in here and just peel back some of that skin so you can see more what you're looking at. And I'm not, I'm not cutting my knife in so much that my knife is actually going into the bone because that's a really good way to dull a knife. Okay, cool. So now I've kind of exposed the area where I want to be entering into the skull. So um, this is going to have a lot of nasal cavities in it right here. And so I want to start my cut right here, like above the eye ridges here. And then I'm going to basically be cutting out a box of the skull. And there's a lot of different tools that you can do use to do this. I actually typically use a hatchet and then I'll put the hatchet on and then use this maul. But though I have four hatchets for some strange reason, I can't find any of them right now. And so I'm going to do an experiment and I'm going to use this Mora knife, which is a really strong knife that has a tang that goes all the way in here. And so we're going to try using the Mora knife. If the Mora knife doesn't work, we're going to get a hacksaw, which will work just fine. I just don't really like sawing that much because it hurts my, I have tendonitis in my arm. So this is an experiment. So um, this, by the way, is a wooden maul, um, which is a great tool to make. I made this out of dogwood and um, yeah, it's awesome. If you don't, if, if you don't have a wooden maul that you've made, um, I would not suggest using any sort of metal maul, but what you could do is just use like a small log. And so I'm hammering that knife in and that worked perfectly. Cool. Well, sometimes necessity is the mother of invention. So we've made that cut right there. And then I'm going to make this cut in the back and position this head on here so that we can come in right here. Okay. And now we're going to do the sides. going to be interesting with the little horns. So basically at this point I'm connecting that front cut to that back cut. And here I came a little bit short so I'm going to extend this cut. Cool. And as you can see that's really I'm severing the skull right here and right here. Cool. So we have managed to uh, do a pretty good job of separating this top piece to where we can lever it off of the head. And you know, if you're doing this for the first time, please wear gloves. I think it's a good idea. So now we have our um, 
Now we have our brain exposed. And so I like to put it into a Ziploc bag because typically I'm not going to be using the brain as soon as I remove it. Typically I'm freezing it and then I make the brain solution a little bit later. And so I'm going to scoop that out. Okay, so I'm scooping this brain out. So I've got this brain and now we're going to put it in the bag and then you can see that I've got it from almost all parts except there's a little bit more in the front which I'm going to use a smaller spoon to get. And then there's a little bit going down into the spinal cord. I don't know what this is called. I think it's the reptilian brain or something. And then that's the last bit of brain. And so thank you so much, sheep, for your brain. And we're not going to do this right now, but... Um, other parts of the head that are really good to eat on a deer or a sheep or whatever is the cheek meat and the eyeballs and the tongue. And the tongue you can get by, um, by making a cut down here and then pulling the tongue out and cutting it at its base. But um, what we're most interested in is tanning the hide. And so we're going to use this and later... I or someone else might get the other parts from the head. This head will be buried and a fruit tree will be planted on top of it. So, so yeah, thank you, beautiful little sheep of my friend. I'm just really happy to be able to honor this sheep by using all of its parts.